Welcome back to our Commitment 2018 election special. Our exclusive political analyst, former U.S. Congressman Ron Klein, former Florida House Majority Leader Adam Hassner are here. They are the experts. First question to you, Ron, if Florida voters actually put Andrew Gillum, a Democrat, in the governor's mansion, what will be the driving factor in that? Well, I think in part it is his uplifting message about, you know, lifting everybody up, fighting hard. He obviously grew up in a, in a home that uh, encouraged that. He, he was very under underprivileged in many ways. He was the first one to go to school, that kind of stuff. I think that's a, that's a positive message for people. And I think that's mixed up with obviously a very toxic environment uh, that's led by the president right now and a lot of rejection. It's not everybody, but a lot of rejection of that. It is a long, long time since the, the state actually elected uh, a governor, a Democrat, uh, 1994. Let me go on the other side, Adam, for a moment. And Ron DeSantis, a uh, very conservative member of the House of Representatives, a Freedom Caucus member, a budget hawk who went all in on the Trump agenda, got a key endorsement from the president. If Ron DeSantis is able to pull this off tonight, will it be because he went beyond that Trump base to take this? Well, I think he's going to have to go beyond the Trump base in, in a midterm, but it's also going to be because his message was about keeping Florida on a positive track. Remember, we talked earlier, and you have Andrew Gillum running on a platform of raising taxes, which has never been done, a very progressive platform that we've never seen. And so this is really uh, uncharted territory for a Democratic candidate running for governor statewide. But DeSantis is going to need to get uh, the independent voters and, again, hold on to a lot of those Republicans who haven't been too pleased with the president over well, the last two years. Ron, that whole idea of raising taxes, did it get through to voters that this gigantic tax increase that was talked about, obviously, on the Republican side, the Gillum Favors was really about corporate taxes. Do you think that message got through to these voters? I, I think he tried to do that. I'm not sure it did, but I don't think at the end of the day that was the big issue. I mean, if, win or lose, I think it's going to be based on what we're talking about. You know, DeSantis is a Trump acolyte and sort of those those kinds of policies, and, and Gillum offers something totally different. Some, like he's just, as you said, we haven't seen since Governor Charles. Speaking of President Trump, now we know on the campaign trail the president has focused on with his uh, rally crowds that this is a vote for me, vote as if I'm on the ballot. ABC News reported within the last hour, the White House is telling surrogates not to say that the midterm is a referendum on the Trump White House, the administration agenda. So I, I have to ask, and it's it's kind of a gimme, but, but does this midterm actually really come down to the almost two years of the, the Trump administration? The White House should be talking to Donald Trump and telling him to close it down because he's been the one out there both verbally and, and, and rhetorically, just positively saying all the time, this is about me. My, my vision, me personally, that's the whole deal. Adam, you think there's a, uh, maybe a regret that he doubled down on this? No, I, I think it's a little bit hard to get the toothpaste back in the tube at this point, but the reality is, is that in a midterm cycle, presidents have lost seats around the country and it was a huge referendum on Obama in 2010. We saw it again in 2006 against George W. Bush in that midterm. So it's not very often where an incumbent president of that party is able to, to hold on. People are looking for something different. So if that's the messaging, it, it might be difficult to get that across, but I don't think we're gonna see anything out of the ordinary if they're seeing data right now that, that says that they're trying to not make this a referendum on the White House. And remember, the Democrats need to flip 23 seats, no small feat, in order to actually take control of the House of Representatives. I'd ask you more about the U.S. Senate, but we can...